that's where President Siem lives and works was the paratroopers Waterloo. In the first hours of the rebellion, Siem refused their demands to surrender and quietly negotiated for time. In less than 24 hours, the rebel plot was crushed and most of the paratroopers had surrendered to loyal Vietnamese soldiers. At least 100 troops and innocent civilians were killed in street fighting between the President's Palace Guard and the American trained paratroop brigade. The rebels marched on Saigon early Friday to trigger the first open demonstration against the Tim regime since it was installed five years ago. A combination of the President's own tenacity and the paratroopers' bungling helped to crush the coup. While the rebels captured most of the capital's key points, they somehow overlooked the radio station. Tim used it to call up help from loyal soldiers. The odds against him seemed hopeless, but men, jeeps, and tanks did respond and the fighting followed. Hundreds of civilians scattered, some not fast enough, in the exchange of gunfire. Within hours, the rebels found themselves outnumbered not only by infantrymen, but Marines and Rangers whom they had mistaken for co-conspirators. Later, the rebels said they wanted the end of Tim's family rule so that the war against communist insurgents might be stepped up. They also demanded the restoration of civil rights, which they said were denied the people. Vietnamese Air Force planes dropped leaflets on Saigon, reassuring the people that the trouble was over. Tim clearly is in full control again. He has not repudiated a pledge to the rebels to form a coalition government, and he has promised some reforms. But he has made it clear the Constitution will not be changed, and he will remain in charge.